The uh, winner of three Tour de France's, including the last one, has returned a positive drug test for the illegal substance clenbuterol. We uh, is with a great honour for this program to welcome one of the world's great sporting commentators, uh, SBS's cycling commentator for these UCI uh, events, Phil Liggett. Good morning to you, Phil. Good morning. Uh, tell us about clenbuterol. Is that is that one drug that is cons- consistently mentioned when when it, there is talk of cyclists maybe cheating with drugs? Well, the, the amount that they're talking about the Contador is supposed to have ingested is infinitesimal. Um, it's uh, it is so small; it's almost unreadable on the Richter scale. Now, the, what he's saying is he's, he's con- it's been food contamination. Now, it is used to ease breathing difficulties, and there's plenty of those in the Tour de France, but with the amount in his system, it couldn't possibly have assisted him in doing anything. I feel there is a degree of sympathy around the world with him on this one because he's never, ever had a positive before. Um, And there is a rumour going around that he, in fact, asked a a friend to bring some meat in from Spain. Now, he was in Po, which is literally over the mountain from Spain. Cyclists like to have a change of food after three weeks on a tour, and he wanted some good Spanish meat. And we know the Spanish farmers do use clenbuterol in the development of their animals. And it could have been residue in the dead food. It, would it not be the case then that if you knew that the Spanish used clenbuterol in their food, then you would try to avoid that eating that food during the Tour de France? Well, yes, you would. But of course, if the meat was really fresh, there might be still traces in the animal. Um, and, and it's not a poison or anything like that. It's just been used to develop the animal into good meat. Um, normally the meat you get would have been killed some weeks before and it would have, well, the residue would have disappeared because we are talking absolutely almost nothing. I'm really surprised that the actual testing has even discovered it if it is as small as they are saying. And the scientists are saying that uh, uh, what Contador is saying is entirely feasible. And I think there's a degree of sympathy uh, because I think originally this test has been leaked and it's come through Germany to the newspapers. Uh, it may never have hit the headlines if it hadn't been leaked in the first place. Well, he's been suspended uh, pending what? what? What happens next? Well, the routine is, of course, if you return a positive test and both samples, I believe, are giving the same reading, therefore you are now uh, simply going to face a sanction. The sanction will be automatic uh, uh, disqualification from victory in the Tour de France and a suspension up to four years. Um, but if they are saying that this really is a hiccup and this amount really doesn't do any good, because you are basing their suspicions on the fact that he's been tested almost daily throughout the Tour de France, and yet on the rest day in Po, where the riders are free to do what they like, he gets a spot check and he comes up with this sort of very, very small positive. And now they're saying, how could that happen? Every day he's negative. On the Tour de France rest day, he's doing a minor positive. So that's why they're all beginning to believe it must have been in the meat. So your conclusion would be unlikely to lose his title? I don't know about that. That's the problem, you see. A positive is a positive. Uh, they may not want to take him off him, off him but the, the basic rule of thumb is at the end of it uh, that a cyclist, he, even if he doesn't know, it's still his responsibility to know what's in his body. And if they apply that rule, then he would be disqualified from the tour. And he is at the moment, as you say, temporarily suspended.